Hey guys, I'm really sorry it's taken a while to record a, an InDesign tip in this case, but I'm back and I'm recording again. And this particular tip we will look at how you can use a paragraph rule to build a shaded pattern behind a single or double line paragraph. So it's going to work not just for a single but also for a double line paragraph. And really what I want to do in this particular case is sort of build a shading area that sort of roughly sits in this particular location. Okay? So where do we start? Well I've already created a paragraph style here that's been applied so I'm going to enable this paragraph rule feature on this paragraph style. The paragraph rules, what are they? They are lines that are attached to a text paragraph. That means that they move with the text as the text reflows in your document. In this case it's just an ad, but if you imagine using this particular trick on subheadings that you have in your annual report or in a book publication or any other long document where you might get a lot of editing happening after you've done your first layout run, then at least all those shaded patterns will, will flow with your text and you don't have to manually move little boxes with a tinted background that you might have placed behind them or if you might it might you might have used an anchored object as well but this just makes things so much easier. So we're going to use the paragraph rules feature for that. Now we can find that under the control panel menu but because I've already created a style I'll like to edit the paragraph rules within the styles panel so we can immediately apply the changes that we're making. And I've got the preview enabled here so that as I'm clicking my paragraph rules on the left hand side here I can actually see what happens. Now this text frame has a 5 mil inset and we'll see what, what effect that has on the paragraph rules. I'll enable the rule below first of all. You can see we have two different rule options. So a paragraph can always have either a rule that sits above it or a rule that sits below it. I'll start with one that sits below. And by default, these are these are all the default settings. So we have some options here. We can change the style or the type. We can change the color, the weight, just the thickness. Um, the indentation settings really determine um, how far away from the um, I should say from the edge of the text of the text column in this case the rule is going to be and the text column is actually determined in this case by the fact that this text frame has an inset so the text column is actually 5 mil less which is why it doesn't exceed past this point you can also set the width to only be links to the text so that it always just marks the area of the text and in this case I want it to go the full length of the column. The offset allows us to position the rule so you can move that up and down. So you can actually have a rule below that sits above. How's that? Uh, what I'm going to do is change the colour and I want to create a shaded pattern so I'm going to quickly make this heaps thicker. So it's about 27 points now and I'm just going to play with the offset a bit and I think that's just about right where that sits problem I have now, I really want to extend that here into that inset area and you can do that by using a negative left indent. You can also do the same on the right hand side if you want to. Incidentally you can extend that inset past, that indent past the text frame edge, so there's no restriction here. So I've got this done, that's pretty good. So that's really all there's to it, there's a rule below it, but as I said in the beginning, the tip was going to cover making this work when your line, your heading, wraps to a second line. And you can see there's an issue. We only have a rule below enabled at the moment. So how can I get that top line also to be shaded? Well in that case I need to enable the rule above. So what we're going to do is with the rule below we're really going to focus on that it sits on the bottom line and with the rule above we're going to focus that it sits on the top line. Once we've done that we actually need to check that if we only have one line that the rules nicely overlap so that we don't see 
any inefficiencies there. Back to editing the air title. And we'll now enable the rule above. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to set the exact same weight and change the stroke color. So there it is. And we'll use the offset to position it. I'll just drop it down a bit. And we'll give it the exact same negative left in there. That's pretty cool. Done. Let's see if it works with the single line as well. Sometimes when I play with this, just as a little bit of advice, I actually make this one a totally different colour so that you can really see uh, that they don't interfere with each other. But because I've already looked at the settings and I know what I'm doing at this stage because I'm cheating a little bit, I've got the numbers in front of me, um, it appears that I just magically pulled these numbers out of my head. It all works in one hit. So let's have a look at what happens if I remove this second line. And you can see that they overlap. Now there is a slight difference in that this height is a little bit higher, so I might need to play with this a little bit more. And I can teach, I'll show you that trick with the color again. So I'll make this bright red. You can actually see that that rule above is sticking out a little bit. So the trick is when you set the rule above and the rule below, is that you just go back to a single line and get that just about right. So maybe the offset just needs to be. Uh, 0.25. There we go. Well, that was a lucky guess. Not quite sure if that also works when I now create the second line. Let me have a look. Yeah, that works. So now I've actually done a better job. Apart from that, I've forgotten to change the color back to the gray. So we'll do that as the last step. I'm just going with the flow here, guys. And there we go. Now, I wanted to make this text white or paper, so I will change the color here. And I've changed it, and I've just changed that manually. The little plus appears here because I've applied a style override. It actually tells you that the style override that you've applied is you changed the color. And I'm just going to incorporate that style override now with the paragraph style by redefining this style, which basically means that everything that's listed after the plus is going to be part of the new paragraph style. Okay, that was it. A not extremely long tip, but I just thought it might be useful. Um, you might already be using the paragraph rules to apply these shaded patterns behind headings, but you might not have thought of using a second rule to also generate double line headings without having to start to fiddle with paragraph rules in preceding or succeeding paragraphs. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.